Well, hi, everyone. So I've been doing a series of interviews with uh, the, the team here at Ellerslie. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, one of the interviews, which who knows, maybe the most important of all uh, with my wife, Leslie, has been just tremendously problematic technologically uh, speaking. We've just had challenge after challenge. And so we decided that we were going to just push back and do it as a Zoom call. So I know this is really strange that here Leslie and I, uh, two people that are always together, have a tough time uh, filming together. So, uh, but we we did it and we decided to turn it into two instead of one. So you get bonus uh, because of this. That's our way of sticking our finger in the enemy's eye on this one, just in case he had something to do with all the technological difficulties. But I think you'll really enjoy this. Just hearing Leslie's perspective on our team is so refreshing. So guys, enjoy. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is, uh, Les, how many times have we tried this? Is this four or five times? I think so. Uh, this must be an important interview. I tell you what, uh, we even had to uh, resort to doing it via Zoom for whatever reason. Uh, there must be some enemy faction that wants to hinder us from having a normal interview set up between the two of us, which uh, is fun. You know, we know that. We know the battle. I don't, I don't think you and I have done much together on camera in a long time. So it is very unusual and it's it's kind of fun. It's different. Right. And that's probably why it's been so hard to pull it together. <laughs> I agree. Well, uh, let's dive into it. We decided that if we're going to have this much friction in trying to get an interview uh, done, that we are going to do two. And so we might as well get more mileage out of this. So we're going to break up uh, and sort of talk about our team, because that's what all these interviews have been, is just sort of get familiar with our team, understand uh, what makes us tick. And it's been really a fun uh fun journey, I think, for me to spend that time, even though this particular interview, which we've done multiple times, and it just like always has a technical glitch. And we had a great interview. Actually, it was about, I don't know, like a month ago when we did it first, and it was really powerful. Uh, and I wish we could just, sometimes you want to bottle things, but I trust that God is going to uh, even draw us out more today. That What we wanted to focus on in this particular interview is just our team. Uh, what giving sort of that overview from our perspective as leaders, specifically your perspective, Les, uh, in regards to what God has given us. When years ago, we prayed that God would surround us with men and women that were humble, that feared the Lord and trembled at his word, and that were marked by honor. Those are three things that we felt were very, very significant for what was needed in the church specifically. And we asked for that. So, did God answer that prayer would be an interesting start. Yes, he definitely answered that prayer. It's It's been a very unusual road, how our staff, how our team has been drawn into this ministry and felt that this was their calling and given their lives to it. I remember when we first came off the road, so we were traveling, we were speaking full time, we were in churches all over the world, basically. And one of the things we that really grieved us that we didn't see much of <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> are leaders who are humble and honorable. Like you said, I remember being behind the scenes with so many different pastors or worship leaders who just acted completely differently on stage when they were in front of people than how they acted behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, they were just not focused on Jesus Christ at all, but they could put on a good show when they were up in front of their church or their conference or whatever it was. And I feel like there were a lot of people we rubbed shoulders with who maybe had an impressive platform online or had a trendy new book, but they didn't really have that willingness to get in the trenches, to be completely unknown and to draw everyone's gaze to Jesus Christ. And I remember thinking, you know, where is a team like that going to come from? Because as we traveled Christianity, we didn't see very many leaders that were that were humble that way and willing to do whatever it, it took to bring a soul into the kingdom of God and to wrestle with that soul to be established in truth. And I remember praying for years that God would bring this kind of a team around us. And every single one of our team members came into the Ellerslie world in a very unconventional way. We didn't go out there recruiting people. We didn't look to see who was, you know, the most successful out there and, and ask if they could be a part of what we were doing. We just asked God to bring those that he wanted to serve alongside of us. And so with Dan and Sandy, who are such pillars here at Ellerslie, part of our core teaching team, part of our executive team. and I remember meeting them for the first time. It was actually kind of a funny story. 
we were going through the process of getting to know a young girl in our church who was unexpectedly pregnant and she was really seriously considering adoption for her unborn child. And she was living with Dan and Sandy at the time. They were really ministering to her and she, God had knit our hearts with her in a beautiful way. And she kind of wanted them because they were like her spiritual parents. She wanted Dan and Sandy to check us out. She didn't, you know, we had only known each other for a few weeks and she thought I need their perspective. And so I remember the, the young girl who was considering the adoption, she was super excited. And she came home and she told Dan and Sandy, you know, I found this, this family that I think is the right fit. I think this is the, the way I'm supposed to go. And I remember Sandy saying, well, you don't, you have to be really careful. You, I mean, these people may seem really nice, but you don't really know them and we need to check them out. So they invited us over unbeknownst to us to check us out, to scrutinize us. And it, <laughs> if I had known that's why they invited us over, I, I would have been a lot more concerned concerned and nervous, but we had such a neat connection with Dan and Sandy from that very first conversation. There was such a like-mindedness, a unity of, of focus, of passion. And I think it was that very day, you know, we met together just to kind of meet and get to know each other, but it was that very day that I think the idea of working together in ministry surfaced. And it was just one of those puzzle pieces that God put together, this couple that was heading into their retirement years. And of course, the retirement years in our culture usually looks like more of a self-focused lifestyle, sort of like I've worked hard all my life. I've put in my time. I've raised my kids. I've worked hard at my job. Now it's time for me and I deserve a break. I deserve a reprieve from just the daily grind. But Dan and Sandy have not approached their retirement years that way. They've been here at Ellerslie for over 11 years since we first started. And from the very beginning, they have been so sacrificial, so willing to be completely and fully invested, whether that means praying with students into all hours of the night, whether that means giving up their freedoms that they would normally have in the season of their life to just travel and, and take more of a leisure approach. They have completely put that aside and said, we want to use these years of our life fully and completely for the glory of God. And I think that has been such an inspiration to me because I've only seen a few people throughout Christian history. Corey Ten Boom was one where she said, I'm going to die with my boots on. And she literally did. I mean, she was preaching and sharing Jesus all the way up until the day she died, which was at a very old age. I don't remember the exact age, but it was, I think it was in her nineties. And then George Mueller was the same, you know, basically preached a sermon a day or two before he passed away in his old age. And that is such a beautiful picture that we don't have, we're not supposed to have seasons of our life that are effective and fruitful for the kingdom of God. And then seasons of our life where that's kind of over and we just focus on ourselves, but you don't see that a lot in, in modern Christianity. And so I think Dan and Sandy have so exemplified that in the way they have poured out so sacrificially and they are very humble, no desire for glory, no desire for credit, just that desire to share the gospel, to serve, to wash the feet of the church. So that has been a huge blessing. And apparently after 11 years, we passed their, their snuff test that we passed, we passed with, <laughs> they scrutinized us and gave us the thumbs up. I hope <laughs> they haven't told us otherwise. The fact that so, they've been around 11 years somehow is some evidence. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't actually asked them if we passed, but I'm assuming <laughs> I remember, I remember Nathan Johnson is another one that it came into our, our life and our ministry in such an unusual way. He was someone that you had met at a, a speaking event, really had a neat connection with him. And he just had a passion to serve us. And at that time, we weren't even, we didn't have Ellerslie. We didn't have a training school or a campus. We were just traveling a lot. And we had a, a ministry kind of out of our house. And he just came out for, I think. Just for anyone that needs a backdrop, Les and I have a lot of books. And so we used to travel and speak just because of our books. And so we were always going around the world. And that's, I, I had held a, I think it was a week long training up in Estes Park. And that's how I met Nathan. So he, he just asked if he could come, I think for a few days or a week to just serve us and just kind of wash our feet. And, you know, my perspective on that was, I don't know what I was expecting, but he came into our world and he was just such a servant. I, I mean, the humility that he demonstrated because he had been to seminary and Bible school and was a Bible teacher and had so many like high level qualifications. And yet he was coming into our world and going out without being asked and buying all these supplies from Office Depot for our online bookstore, for our, you know, little bookstore for shipping things out. It's just, just seeing a need and fulfilling it. And I remember him washing our dishes. And I remember walking down into the kitchen, seeing this guy that who was just 
here to serve our ministry, deciding he was going to wash our dishes. And that was such a um, amazing moment for me to see someone so highly skilled and highly qualified who was just finding joy in delighting in washing our dishes, which I never would have asked him to do. I don't think we ever would have asked him to go to Office Depot and buy books, bookstore supplies or wash our dishes. Uh, but he willingly saw what needed to be done and just filled that role. And I would say after 11 years of serving alongside of Nathan, that is still who he is. He will just, he, he does not, he is an incredibly gifted speaker and teacher. He is, the students that come through Ellerslie absolutely love Nathan Johnson and are so edified by his teaching. And yet he is so willing to take the lowest place and to serve and to even wash dishes or do things that are behind the scenes. And that's what's always stood out to me. And I think that is also very unusual in Christianity today, because usually if someone is gifted and has a lot of talent and communication ability, they're going to want to kind of fight to be in front of people all the time. They don't really want to do the behind the scenes work, but Nathan is willing. He's just as happy doing behind the scenes work as being in front of people, which is a huge testimony and very rare quality. So again, I feel like God brought these people, answered our prayer in such unconventional ways. We didn't go out seeking them. They just came to us in, and they didn't come to us with fanfare and bells and whistles or putting a resume. And they just, God brought them to our attention. And we said, that's the kind of person that is cut out for this work. And they have been amazing. And it hasn't been easy. I would say if, if any of our team was in this ministry for the, the benefits, the personal benefits, they would have left a long time ago because they're really, it's like living in a battle zone. It's, it's very intense. It's very hard. There, there are amazing rewards, but you're not going to do it for financial success. You're not going to do it for fame and glory. You do it for the glory of God. Otherwise you're not going to last. And so the fact that our team has lasted 11 years and is going strong shows me that their motive is, is truly in line with God's. Uh, Sarah Guthrie is another one that we met at a speaking event in Rhode Island and just kind of kept in touch with her over the years. And when she finally came through a semester at Ellerslie, she, it was just so beautiful to see just how God perfectly prepared her for the role that she was to play. As soon as she came through a semester, I think our whole entire team that we were like, okay, how do we hold on to this girl? She is like gold. She is just so willing to to pour her life out in whatever sphere and whatever way that is needed and willing to do things that other people wouldn't be willing to do. So I think we're, we're fighting over Sarah internally all the time in a friendly way. You know, I need her for this. You need her for that. Let's see how we can share her. She's just, she's so, she's so invaluable to us. Philip Hartman is someone who came through an Ellerslie semester at the age of maybe 12 or 13, right? He was very young when he first came brother. through. He was young. He may have been he a little maybe, older. His brother, came, his, his okay. brother has the record of the, being the all-time young. Okay, yeah. But he was young. I mean, he was yeah. in the, he was in his teens when he came through Ellerslie for the first time. And he stood out to us even then. And over the years, just seeing God grow him into this really powerful example of practical Christianity being lived out. It, it has been the most amazing blessing to see him grow up and remain consistent. Uh, and now that he's, you know, a businessman and a husband and a father, nothing's changed. I mean, his, his passion has only grown since those, those days when we knew him as a teenager. And, and he, I think in another interview that you did with him, you talk about how he convicts you on a regular basis because he takes these truths so seriously. And I, I, I totally agree with that. And that we need that on our, on our Ellerslie team. We need to stay sharp in these truths that they cannot grow stale after 11 plus years. We need people around us who are constantly grappling with them, wrestling with them, living them out because it keeps us sharp. And that's, that's a huge blessing. I, I think of Annie Weshi, who didn't do an interview because she's not in, in Colorado, but she's our creative director. So she designs our website. She designs the set apart girl magazine. She came into our life when Hudson was three months old, our oldest child Hudson, and she was his nanny. And God just connected her heart with ours from that very, those very early days. If she wasn't like a full-time nanny, she was just kind of an extra pair of hands as we were trying to juggle parenthood and ministry. And she had a passion and desire to use her gifts in design and photography for the glory of God. And so she went from just doing, you know, helping us take care of, of our kids to office work, to being this amazing anointed graphics designer for our ministry. And that to me is a testimony of someone just saying, I submit my 
my talents, my desires to you, Lord. And I ask that you would use them for your glory. And that's what God has done. And so I could go on and on about our entire team. Those are just some highlights for me, me but I think, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, So one problem with zoom is it's hard to sometimes communicate with delays, but, uh, Grace McConaughey, could you make a comment about Grace? Because we didn't get an interview with her either. She had left for Belize when we were putting this together. Uh, give a little just synopsis of what we've witnessed in the miracle, the, the power of her life as well. So Grace McConaughey, who's Dan and Sandy's daughter, is another amazing team member who has been through some extreme issues in her life with health, just very debilitating, life-threatening health issues for multiple years. I have seen her apply all of the truths that are constantly talked about here in this environment in a very real way to the very real struggles that she faces on a daily basis. And one thing I appreciate I appreciate so much about grace is that when you're living kind of on that edge of eternity, where your life feels very fragile, which I feel like her life has at times felt very fragile. It kind of reminds you and and brings, brings to the surface, what really matters, what you're really living for, what it's really all about. And for someone grace's age, who's kind of in those single years of her life, you know, that would be typically a time when you would be kind of pursuing more earthly things, you know, trying to get a career going or pursue marriage or, you know, develop a big social life or whatever it is that the people run after in those years, she has fully dedicated those years to serving and giving glory to God, whether she's in bed or whether she's functional, she is always having that attitude that Lord, I'm a vessel in your hands. And I've seen God use her tremendously, even when she's been tremendously physically impaired. So I think that that story just in a nutshell could be encouraging for someone who might have that passion to be used by God to build his kingdom, but has a lot of physical or practical restrictions. Grace has been so used by God in spite of those those things. And in fact, because of those things, she's had an even stronger testimony. I've seen God work through those challenges in her life in such a powerful way. So overall, I would say it, it's sort of the story of when God writes your ministry story. You know, we have the book, when God writes your love story, our team, the way God has knit this group together and built this ministry is very much a God written story. So anyone who might be listening to this wondering, you know, how in the world did this Ellerslie team come about? It's, it's literally submitting to God and saying, Lord, you bring the men and women that you desire. And those who come have had that complete surrendered attitude. I am all in, this is all about Jesus. It's not about me. And that's the only reason they're still around. And even though we live together on a battlefield, I would say we we find such amazing joy in being a part of what God's doing in establishing our students in truth. It is, it is such a great joy and such a great privilege. And it's worth all the sacrifices, the heartache, the things that come with Frontline's Christian ministry. But we are so very grateful for the team that God has given us. And I really hope that anyone listening to this video or watching this video will have the chance to experience that in person, something very special. Well, thanks, Les, for giving just sort of that enunciation. It's just beautiful. I love hearing it. Uh, and just as an encouragement, if you're a leader out there and uh, you're sort of in this zone of, of, of your ministry development, where Les and I were too, where it's just like, God, are there those out there that share common vision? Uh, just begin to pray very specifically. Les and I prayed every day for years that God would surround us with men and women of like ilk, uh, of similar calling, of similar gravity of weight of soul, because it is hard sometimes when you feel alone, but God knows where his uh, warriors are, his soldiers are. And so just continue to pray for that. God is faithful. He he really is. Uh, well, Les, do you want to uh, maybe share the rest? We'll, we'll sort of have some part two. Part two. Uh, next. All right. Well, God, God's blessings, everyone. If you've ever had a desire to come to Ellerslie, but maybe finances were standing in the way, we have a great opportunity for you right now. Uh, We're giving away 10 full ride scholarships up and through March 8th, 2021. So if you're hearing this before March 8th, then jump on it. Uh, Go to ellerslie.com to learn more about that. If you hear this after March 8th, just know our passion is to not allow finances to stand in the way. So we have scholarships for you. Whatever we can do to serve you and wash your feet, please let us do it. God's blessings.